Hey guys, in our previous video, we discussed how to design the protector framework using TypeScript. And also, we learned what is the use of tsconfig and all these details, whatever we have declared within the file, we have discussed all those in detail. And also, we discussed how we are going to maintain the project structure that is having the base function where we are going to write the common protector actions like the click event or maybe the send case or handling the browser pop-up the alerts or maybe the window handling all those stuff and if you have anything specific to our application we are going to write that in the common functions for example a calendar or maybe handling uh, bootstrap drop, drop downs like that and i'm also going to introduce a new package called utils where we are going to maintain few classes or few functions that are going to give us test data for example in testing, almost we have to do some dynamic data where we use the timestamp to uh, have the name in the data or maybe we are going to, let's say, assume that we are going to generate few data where we want to get some dynamic data. Maybe we can use some of the APIs like the Faker or Fabricator like that. And also we can use the uh, date functions like we have a calendar and we have to select date maybe on the next week or maybe after the 24 hours, something like that. So all those stuff, we are going to take care within the utils folder. Now let's get started in the coding. And I'm going to create a folder called let base here. So let base in the sense, let code, and the, these are like your base files. So I'm just giving a name, it as a base, let base. Based on a project or maybe your org organization, you can have your names. That's very common, right? Yeah. Now within this base, we are going to create another folder called um, base. And then again, click on this let base and click on this create new folder. And here I'm going to say like common. And then within this, again, I'm going to create a folder called utils. Okay, so the folder structure is ready now. Now within the base folder, I'm going to create a file called protector base. And of course, it's going to be of .ts because we are switching to the TypeScript entirely now. So what this class is going to have functions like the click action, the handling, the alerts, the handling, the frames, handling the uh, window handling, all those stuff. So what are the common stuff we have learned so far in our entire protector series? We are going to write all the functions here step by step within the base class. So first, let's write a class name and use the export keyword to make sure that this class is going to be used by another class as well. So this is like your import and export stuff in the JavaScript. Same, we have to follow in the TypeScript as well. Now I have a detailed video on the TypeScript classes, the OOPS concept, the static, the functions, all the other stuff like the access modifier of public and private. So I might not be go in detail in here all, all those concepts again and again. So I will recommend you to watch my TypeScript playlist entirely first, then move to the TypeScript protector framework videos. Let's continue. So export class and I'm going to name this as again the protector base class here. So I'm going to write my first function that is to click on particular element. So here we'll say like public and then we have to include the keyword called async because of course we are using the async and await keyword. The framework, is, framework also should be designed in such a way that we can handle the promise manager promises very easily using the selenium promise manager. And I'm going to name this as click. And what are the stuff we need within the arguments? So where we are going to do the click is basically on the element finder, right? So I'll just pass element. That's a local variable name. And the type is going to be element finder. So element finder. And of course, we have to import this element finder from the protector that will TypeScript, TypeScript will automatically take care. You have to just give control space. The import statement will be kicks in. And after that, do we need any argument? Definitely no. No, no, right? Because of course we need an element to do the click action. Now here I will say like element dot click. Now you might ask me what is the benefit of this? Because I can just find any other element and I can use dot click there directly. Why I have to create a function and I have to pass the parameter as an element finder and based on that I have to do the click. The first reason we are going to introduce few of the methods inside this. This is framework, right? So this is how the framework starts. For example, 
uh, when we have to do the click to action, before that, we should make sure that the element is visible and the element is in the ready state to do the click to action, right? So here we can say like we can introduce the uh, wait concept, the protected expected conditions. We can include that within the function as well. So we'll call the function only once, but internally it will do some two, three tasks at the same time. So while I'm going to write a script using this function, you will understand that very clearly. As of now, we are going to continue with the writing of the functions. So of course, what we need, we need the expected condition. So I'm going to bring that here. So private. Why private? Because of course, I'm not going to use this anywhere else, right? And then here I will say like browser dot expected condition. And what is this going to return us is basically uh, expected condition. So we, if we want, we can annotate that here as well. Okay. So this is going to return us uh, expected condition. I mean, the data type is going to be protected expected condition. So that is what we have specified here. Now, of course, we need to specify the timeout for the expected condition. So I'm going to set this as a uh, global level within the class. So private timeout equal to uh, I will go with 30 seconds uh, based on your project you can change this people will say something like you should not have that much time this much time don't listen to them just you know your application uh, it can be maximum two minutes after that also it's taking much time is there is of course there is a performance issue on your uh, application you have to talk to your developer and try to fix that but one minute uh, 30 seconds is the common time but in some of the application because of the environment issues or because of the uh, database uh, server issue or something like that might be a situation it can go up to two minutes so talk to your developer understand how much response time they are expecting and that should we have to return with our script so as of now we'll go with the 30 seconds uh, very common but based on your application of course you can change it okay so before clicking on any of the element, we have to make sure that element is visible and also the element is clickable in the state. So here I'm going to say browser dot wait. And within that, I'm going to say this dot expected condition dot element to be visible. Or we can directly go like element to be clickable. That is more sufficient, I believe. And within this, we have to pass the element. That is what we are getting in the argument. And here we have to specify that timeout that is actually this dot timeout, right? The global thing, whatever we have discussed. And within the wait argument uh, parameter, we can pass the optional message as well. So if there is something wrong, it will tell us like uh, what happened. So if there is a fail statement, I mean, if there is any fail occurrence, it will give us whatever the statement we are going to give here. So here I'll say like um, failed to click the element, something like that. So failed to click the element and that's it we are done pretty much with this element dot click action right so this is very very uh, very common so here we have this browser dot wait to wait until the element becomes clickable and after that we are doing the click action here and of course i have to use the await keyword okay cool so successfully we have written our first function and of course, whenever we are going to create a framework that should be understandable by everyone. So of course, we have to write few of the comments as well. So let's do that. So for that slash double star and hit enter, that will give you this kind of uh, comments where we can write like parameter. What is the parameter? The element to be clickable, right? So Okay, cool. That's fine. Now let's write another method. I'm going to write this for the type. That is the send keys, right? So here I will say like public. Uh, let me have some spaces here. Yeah, cool. So public and async. And here I'll say like uh, type. And within the type parameter, what we need, we need two things. One is the element in which we are going to do the type action. And another one is the data. For example, let's say that I have a text box here, right? So let's go to the slate code dot in and let's say that I'm going to do the login. So for that, I want the test data as well as the locator of this particular text box, right? So we need two arguments there. So let's give the element first. 
and that's going to be of element finder and here we have the string uh, that's going to be of test data right so i'll just name this as test data colon and then followed by string that's it right now within this what we have to do of course we have to wait until the element is visible right so i'm just going to copy this guy here and here i'll say instead of element to be clickable i will say like visibility of the element and uh, fail to um, view the element something like that just uh, if you understand that that's absolutely fine or we can say like element is not visible that will make much sense here so element is not visible okay this statement will be executed only if there is a failure or else it will be never shown in, shown on the console okay now here we'll say like a wait and then element dot send keys and within this what are the test data we are going to receive we'll pass it here okay that's it very cool but in certain conditions let's say that we have already a value here but I wanted to clear the value in the text box and then I have to type. So this method will not do. This method will basically do the append. But I wanted to clear and type. So for that, we are going to write another function. And here we'll say like clear and type. Okay. So within the method, everything is going to be very same. But only one line we have to include that is element.clear. So we'll wait until the element is get cleared and after that we'll type our data okay that's it so i think pretty much enough for this video the three methods we have run i mean we have uh, written so far um, probably we'll write a few other methods in the next video and then i will tell you how to use this in the test script okay so let's quickly have some comments as well so let's go and write Okay, so we have written our comments and uh, three functions as of now. We'll continue with the same on the next video as well. I'm going to write each and every function. Or if you think this is boring, probably you can do let me know in the comments. I will write all the things and I will upload the code on the GitHub. And then I will just give you a walkthrough of the code. But I really wanted to teach from the very scratch. I think that will definitely help uh, who are um, ready to build their own framework. And uh, definitely we are going to bring some of the more components uh, we are writing the basic components now, but of course, in the comments or in the utils, we will bring so many things um, in the future videos. Okay, so let's have a quick recap. So we have uh, created a uh, project structure, let base, and within that we have three folder: base folder, common folder, and the util. And within the base folder, I have a class called protector base .ts. and within this we have written export class, the class name. And after that, we have two global variables. One is for the expected condition, and another one is timeout related to the expected condition. And after that, we have written three functions. One is to do the click, where we are passing element as an argument. And also within the function, we have our wait condition. So until the element is clickable, it is going to wait. Once the element is clickable within the given time, then it will do the click action, or else it will tell us like fail to click the element. And then we have this type where it is going to append the data by default. And then we have this another function called clear, clear and type. So before sending the data, it will clear the value and then it will type the value. Okay, I hope you have really enjoyed the video. If so, do let me know in the comments. And also, if you have any expectation how you wanted the framework to look or if you have any queries, please do ask me in the comments or join our Gitter community. Probably I will happy to uh, answer all, the, all your questions. So that's it from my side. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one very soon.